Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Mark Langtree and I'm the Head of Science and Sport here at Explorium and I'll be your host. The Engineers Ireland STEPS programme is a non-profit outreach programme that promotes interest and awareness in engineering as a future career to school students through a portfolio of projects. STEPS is supported and funded by Science Foundation Ireland, the Department of Education and Skills and industry leaders Arup, ESB, Intel and TII. Today, the STEPS team at Engineers Ireland are celebrating International Women's Day. I'll be chatting with Eveen Sheedy. This is the fourth and final video in our International Women's Day video series as part of STEPS Engineers Week. Eveen Sheedy is a Curum Lifetime CDT PhD Fellow based in NUIG. Originally from Galway, Eveen completed her undergraduate degree in Biomedical Engineering at NUIG in 2017. And she went on to complete a Master's degree biotechnology in UCC and completed her thesis in MIT. On Evening's return from the States, she spent a year working as an R&D engineer in Interasense, a Galway startup. But her love of research brought her to seeking a PhD position, and she's taken up a PhD with Emer Dolan in biomedical engineering to develop advanced immunotherapies and delivery strategies for the treatment of ovarian cancer. In conjunction with starting a PhD, Evian also set up NUIG's Why STEM Society in September 2020. Their aim is to support, help and encourage women in science, technology, engineering and maths in NUIG to help achieve their full potential. I'll hand you over to Evian, who will talk to you about her career in biomedical engineering and why she enjoys it so much. Hi, my name is Aileen Sheedy and I'm so excited to be talking to you today about engineering, um, focusing on a bit of biomedical engineering. Um, I came into contact with engineering during my transition year and it's completely shaped a career that I've loved um, and get so much enjoyment out of and I hope to shed a bit of light on it for all of you as well. Thanks. So. I want to talk about engineering in general first. Do you know, if you look at the world around you, it touches absolutely every aspect of your life. You're watching this on a, a device, so that was designed by an electronical and a mechanical engineer. Uh, you're in a building, or you might be driving over a bridge that was designed by a civil engineer. Um, at one point or another, you possibly went on an airplane, which was designed by an aeronautical engineer. Um, if your grandparents may have had a hip replacement or a heart stent put in that was designed by a biomedical engineer and then um, plants to um, make the biomedical devices and the pharmaceutical devices were designed by chemical engineers. So it, it really touches every aspect of life. Looking at my own experience or kind of what led me to become an engineer, um, I looked back as far as even primary school. Do you know, I absolutely loved arts and crafts. Friday afternoon was my favourite time of the week for that particular reason. And then maths and science were always my favourite subjects, even in primary school and secondary school. They were the things I would have no problem doing over and over and over again. Um, in primary school, my favourite pastime was making quote-unquote inventions. Now these inventions usually consisted of um, bikes and skateboards being haphazardly thrown together with some string, but nevertheless it massively fostered a love for all things kind of design and implementation. And then when I got to secondary school, I came into contact with um, subjects such as woodwork and metalwork. So I really came into contact with those subjects during the transition year and that was honestly the thing that has set the trajectory for my career even still which is probably 12, 10, 12 years later. Um, I tasted metalwork um, and slash engineering as a transition year subject um, and made some of the um, projects which you see on the left hand side. So we made a phone holder, um, thermoformed a frisbee, um, used lathing to make pen holders, a lot of polishing and bending to make the metal um, coin holders. Um, and I was just absolutely fascinated. I thought this was the bee's knees, the best su the subject going, you know, I put together my love for 
um, maths and physics with also my like little inventive streak. It was kind of like, oh wow, this, this is the subject for me. But I had never tried it as a, you know, I'd never taken it to junior cert level. So I was kind of going, oh God, is this something that I can just pick up? Like, would I, I'm probably not able for it. Like, do you know, it's, it's all for lads. Um, and thankfully I had an amazing engineering teacher who kind of, you know, I went and talked to him and he was like, look, you clearly have a love for the subject. It's something you enjoy doing, you know, with a bit of work, why wouldn't you be able to do it? Um, so I kind of was like, okay, he gave me some work to do over that summer. I came back, started for my leaving cert, um, ended up getting engineering student of the year in final year and um, I think an A1 in engineering. So that's something, you know, for anyone who's listening to this, that's kind of going, oh God, I don't think I can do it. With a bit of work and a bit of dedication. And if it's something you love, you absolutely can. Um, so I then went on to choose engineering as a degree. I went to NUIG and um, studied biomedical engineering for four years. Um, you know, a day in the life of a biomedical engineer. So as I, as I was talking about earlier, it's traditionally say like your heart stents, your, your hip replacements, or even something as simple as, you know, a stethoscope. If you go to the doctor and they listen to your breathing, that is one of the earliest biomedical engineering inventions. You know, anything kind of medically related, we designed it, you know. Um, so I chose to do biomedical engineering and I found that I loved the kind of more Sci the bio -y side of it, the kind of more biology side of the devices. So I'm currently working at me developing a treatment for ovarian cancer um, and then also an, an accompanying device to deliver the therapy to the area which is needed. So that's another thing to kind of realise that like the discipline is so vast. There is something to suit absolutely every, everyone and not only in biomedical engineering, but in, a, in any discipline, you know, it, there are so many different areas you can go into and they're all so incredibly interesting. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, it's, I, you, you never almost have enough hours in the day to read about all the interesting things that are happening. So I'm a PhD student in NUIG at the moment. Um, during my undergrad and placement, um, or undergrad and masters, I've been fortunate enough to travel to the States. Uh, that's another massive thing with engineering. It's, it's a passport pretty much to the world. It is a discipline that, you know, language isn't really a barrier in the sense of the, the maths speak for itself. And it's, it's something that if you wanted to travel the world with it, you absolutely could. Um, and yeah, it's, you can go to so many different places with it and you can stay in academia, which is what I'm doing at the moment, or you could go into industry. So they'd be the likes of Medtronic, Boston Scientific, Stryker. Um, Ireland has one of the best biomedical engineering hubs in the world. So we're lucky enough that all of the big companies that provide most of the medical devices to the world have a, a hub in Ireland. So we've access to world-class jobs um, that you'll hopefully love. Uh, so um, advice I'd give to my younger self, uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Um, you know, if I kind of went in at the end of TY, oh God, no, you know, I, I wouldn't be good enough for it. I, I wouldn't be able to keep up with the lads. You know, I wouldn't be in a career that I absolutely love. Um, just because something isn't traditionally fe female doesn't mean that you won't absolutely excel in it. Um, in our undergraduate class, I think most of the top marks were given to the to the girls, you know, we're well able to keep up with the lads and even surpass them. So don't ever let being a girl hold you back from doing something you would love. 
um, and you will have a very fulfilling career because of it. Thanks Evie for talking to us and sharing with us your love of engineering. Again, the STEPS team would like to thank our sponsors, Science Foundation Ireland, the Department of Education and Skills, and industry sponsors, Arup, ESB, Intel, and TII. And thank you all so much for watching. And make sure to subscribe to the Engineers Ireland YouTube channel to watch all of our STEPS International Women's Day video series.